The following movie has been rated PG-13 by the Motion Picture Association of America. Some material may be inappropriate for young children. Parents may wish to consider whether it should be viewed by those under 13. Ah, Panama City, Florida's Reno, home to white sandy beaches, seaside resorts, and host to David Winter's award-winning film, Dancing It's On. So I first heard about this movie through the Cinema Snobs channel on their 2015 Worst of list, where it got pretty high praise. And it's called Dancing, It's On. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brad ranked it up amongst Birdemic or Troll 2, even The Room, as far as good bad movies go. This piqued my interest because I consider that to be a pretty bold claim for a newer movie that had just gotten a theatrical release at the time. I went ahead and looked for some clips online and found one that accurately represents the movie in a nutshell. You were looking great till you threw the chair in the pool. That's when you blew it. What do you know about dancing? You don't know anything about dancing. What do I know about dancing? Yeah, that's right. What do you know, huh? Dancing is my life. You don't know a single thing about dancing. Oh, no? Where'd you learn that? Forget you ever saw it, kid. Just forget you ever saw that. This isn't exactly a, a, a full review. Um, I, I might be giving some sort of rating, uh, mostly based on if it, I feel it's worth your time or not. I'm kind of figuring it out as I go along, so nothing real specific yet, but I just figured I'd give you a heads up of what I'm trying to go for here. Things will be loosely organized into different sections for the video. And the uh, first one I want to talk about is the director. It is often said that the most entertaining bad movies are vanity projects spearheaded by one person. In this case, that person is David Winters. As director, producer, co-writer, supporting actor, and choreographer, it is safe to say that he had a hand in almost every aspect of production. According to interviews, the working title for this project was East Side Story, and it was supposed to be set in Taiwan, I believe. The East Side Story idea was crafted to be a bookend to David Winter's career, as he had originally starred in the stage and film production of West Side Story. It was an ambitious idea, but ultimately things were scaled back, and the movie was filmed in Florida using... Uh, contestants and stars from different dance reality TV shows here in the U.S. It's not clear what form the original East Side Story idea would have taken, but I think a lot of the original elements were kept for dance and it's on sort of an old Hollywood musical with a lighthearted tone and Shakespearean elements woven in. This is an eclectic movie which matches David Winter's career and is somewhat fitting after a West Side Story David Winters went on to have a decades-long career in the film industry. He was a successful choreographer in the 60s and 70s. In the 80s, he moved on to producing and directing, including Thrashin, a skateboarding movie featuring a young Josh Brolin, as well as writing and directing the infamous Space Mutiny, which was featured on Mystery Science Theater and Red Letter Media's Best of the Worst. In the late 80s and early 90s, he worked with David A. Pryor. So if you found your way to my channel, there's a good chance you were familiar with some of David Winter's work without even knowing it. I have to admit I was somewhat surprised at the extent of his career, uh, even in the world of B-movies. Especially considering the final product that Dance and It's On became, speaking of which, the plot. <laughs>
dance and it's on does contain the typical story beats you would expect from a dance movie rich girl unenthusiastically travels to a new place for the summer there is tension with a disapproving parent a romantic interest pops up in addition to a rival and everything culminates in a dance competition all of this is perfectly acceptable but the problem is is that only this simple framework is presented in the movie as far as a plot goes there really isn't much of one each element is slowly presented over the course of the movie without much progression or development and each character's motivation shifts scene to scene certain story threads and supporting characters are picked up and dropped seemingly at random and the bulk of the story progression is a result of contrived miscommunications between characters there is a ton of filler and about half an hour in i had to totally reevaluate my expectations for this movie the pacing suffers as well because it's structured like a musical so the story grinds to a halt every 10 to 20 minutes now to be fair there are a handful of sequences where the choreography does express the emotion of the character and moves the story forward but for every one that works there is one that's jarring there is no better example of this than the end of the movie where we get three full-length dance sequences one by a character we have been introduced to before and is the MC of the dancing competition the other two by couples we have not seen before this point in the movie we get to see their routines in full before any of our main characters set a foot on stage it feels like someone dropped 10 minutes of a dancing reality show directly into the movie but even when it's obvious padding the dancing is consistently entertaining throughout the movie the main actors are clearly dancers first, which is where they shine, but it doesn't bode well for the acting. In 2015, the two leads, Whitney Carson playing Jennifer and Keon Wispy Chap playing Ken, Ken, Ken the dishwasher, were both winners of Dancing with the Stars and So You Think You Can Dance. During an interview, David Winters expressed a sincere desire to give back to the entertainment industry and give young dancers a chance to showcase their talent on the big screen. He selected Whitney and Keon due to their impressive television appearances. Many other cast members also had success on shows like So You Think You Can Dance or Dancing with the Stars. Russell Ferguson, who plays a character called The Captain, was crowned best dancer in the world. It is commendable for David Winters to provide the opportunity to fresh young faces in the entertainment industry, but it's a shame more wasn't done with the material. Between the high quality dancing, we see overacting. What you call me? Underacting. Jeez. And things that are just straight up bizarre. Gary Daniels shows up as Jennifer's father while looking like a Bond villain. He has one of the better moments in the movie. Now you gotta prove to Jen, and you gotta prove to me, that you're worthy of her. as well as a hilariously awkward introduction scene with Jennifer near the beginning of the movie. Well, I am your daughter. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all of a sudden, and it's oh, porno! Gosh, there are quite a few unintentionally hilarious moments throughout the movie, and many are a result of the uneven acting. Several scenes involving a crowd of extras happen, and it is clear they grabbed whatever tourists and locals were nearby. It was a lot of fun keeping an eye on the background for repeat extras or just weird stuff happening with them throughout the movie. A few of them even get lines. And, of course, there is David Winters playing the master who has stepped away from his craft due to heartbreak. He has to find his confidence and work past the death of his son to lead Ken and Jennifer to victory. So where does all this leave us in regards to recommendation? I haven't even gotten started on the writing. Really? I think you had some trouble with your brain or the numerous technical issues, but those are best experienced within the context of the film. There are lots of little continuity errors, so the editing is something to keep an eye on, and things like the ADR being just off enough to be noticeable are amusing to say the least. There is a sincerity to this movie, misguided perhaps, but enough to make it endearing. The subject matter is inoffensive, and the execution is mediocre enough to keep you engaged for the full runtime. The simplistic story got a little grating to me, but if you're a fan of B-movies, this deserves a spot in your collection. It is a good candidate for viewing parties, and I would consider it relatively accessible to those less invested in good bad media. It inspired me enough to make this video. So there's that. Would I consider it one of the most entertaining bad movies? No, but I would say it is well worth checking out. This movie seemed to slip through the cracks, and I haven't seen a lot of buzz about it, so I wanted to do my part to help get the word out. Unfortunately, David Winters passed away in April of 2019 right around the time I was considering making this video. 
which means that Dance and It's On is his last completed project. I can't say for certain if that's what he would have wanted, but I personally do find some small comfort in the fact that through his work, he does live on. make the packages about yay big easy to carry no weak stuff you know something that's powerful